All right, let's take a look at how to develop a Linux C or C++ program on Windows or Mac with VS Code and Docker. Let me first open up VS Code on my Mac and I'm going to import a minimal example project from GitHub. I'll share the link in the description below. When I open up the project, VS Code detects that it's a C project and asks me to select the compiler. This is because I already have the C++ extension installed, but don't worry if you don't have it, I'll get to it later. So this project comes with .vs code folder, cmake list.txt, docker file, and main.c files. In .vs code folder, we see some config files. Note that here in ccpp properties.json file, the name is set as Linux. This is because the target platform for this project is Linux. Launch.json file defines debugging configurations, while tasks.json file defines build tasks. I won't go into too much details here, but you can check out my previous video in the description below for more details in the configuration files. Next, I have cmakelist.txt file here, nothing special about this. And I have docker file, which defines the minimal docker container for C and C++ development. If your program has additional dependencies, then you can add installation commands in this docker file. Finally, I have the main.c file, which is just 10 lines of code. Note that VS Code is complaining about the include file here because this file is specific to Linux platform while I'm currently running this on a Mac OS. So I can't build this project locally on a Mac or Windows. If I try to build it locally, the compilation fails. So how do I build and debug this project on a non-Linux system? I can run it through a Docker container. Let's install some unnecessary extensions first. I already have the C++ and CMake tools extension from Microsoft here, but if you don't have them already, go ahead and install these. What we also need is dev containers extension by Microsoft. This is currently in preview version, but you can see that more than 15 million people have already downloaded this extension. Okay. When the extension is installed, the Remote Explorer icon should appear on the left pane. We are now ready to build a Docker image. Make sure you have the Docker installed and is currently running. We are going to build a Docker image from this Docker file. Open up a terminal and type in the Docker build command. Okay, the build process is complete and I should see the image I just built. I'm going to run the container and will mount the project home directory to this container with this dash V option. Oops, I forgot to specify the Docker image. Okay, let me try it again. And now the Docker is running. I can see the project files in the container. This is a two way shared mounting. So if I make any changes in the container, I should see these changes from my host machine. For example, I can remove this build directory here within the container and this folder is now gone from the host as well. Okay. Leave the Docker container running so that I can attach VS Code to this running container. Click on the Remote Explorer icon on the left and I should see this running Docker container here. Click on this icon to attach to this running container which opens up another VS Code instance. This instance is attached to the container as you can see from the left bottom corner here. I'll open up the folder where project directory is mounted, in this case slash work. Now another VS Code instance opens up where I can now see the project files. If I try to build a project, this fails because I need to install some extensions again inside this Docker container instance VS Code. Click the extensions icon on the left and install the C++ and CMake extensions again, this time within this container. When that's done, VS Code prompts me to select the compiler and I'm finally ready to build and debug the project. I can come back to the main.c file and run the build task. Now the build succeeds and it creates the Linux uptime executable. I can debug it just as I would normally by adding a breakpoint and run debug. Because I set the launch config to break at the entry point, it will break in the beginning of the main function, but all the debug functionalities should work just as it would normally. For example, I can step in, step out, continue and examine variables within VS Code. Okay, so that's it for today and I'll see you in the next video.